Another great afternoon in South Florida for All-American Action at the Triple Crown Rising Stars. Uh, but by the time it's over, there'll be some friendships. In fact, I know it's happened years past. There'll be teammates today who've never met who two, three, four years from now will be still texting and, and tweeting each other and Facebooking each other throughout their college careers. And that's part of the great thing about this game. Lead off at bat, it's Emily Lofton who hits the ball down the third base line hard. It's an infield single off the glove of the third baseman, Berkeley Callup. Oh, that ball just ripped down the line. Nice effort over at third, trying to get some leather on it. So Lockton of Gators Gold led it off. Emily out of Florida. She is a 2014 grad, enjoying her senior year right now. Emily was running on the pitch, which might be the order of the day in this All-American game. Run them, swing them. Let it fly. Coaches are uh, either calling nothing or calling very aggressively if they are giving any calls today. And we head to Megan O'Bear. Megan, a 2015 grad. She has the number two spot in this batting order today. Does O'Bear. And for Megan, out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, so right here close to our ball field today, she makes a short move over to the field. And uh, here she's going to lob one to second base that is grabbed for an out runner retreats and there's one down locked and stays at first base on the obert line out well the off speed you can see just tipped off the end of the bat great defensive effort to get that glove underneath the ball natalie cut right on the catch runner goes again ball slapped down the third base line so it was cut right at second base katie Wenger is playing first this inning. Huffman catching Smith. That's the battery. We see Marissa Gurgle's information. Marissa with an 0-1 count in this All-American at bat. Berkeley, Cal Berkeley Callup at third base. Natalia Rodriguez at shortstop. It's Danny Jostin in left field. This ball an out into the glove of Callup for out number two. And back to the bag goes locked in. Let me finish that outfield. Danny Jostin in left. Reese Guevara in center. And Kiara Jenkins in right field. Again, ball hit right at one of the defensive players, so great job by Berkeley Callup to make the make the out and then check over to first. Several attempts to run and finally one not on a foul ball. Right. So congratulations to Emily Lockton who was wanting to showcase her speed and here she does it. Yeah, Lockton gets a great jump. The throw off the mark a little bit too far to the right side of the bag. Brooke Clemens. Now batting, hitting in the number four spot is Brooke. And batting order, 26 players deep for Monster Mash, randomly assigned. We told the players before the game, if you're hitting in the 19 spot or the 21 spot, don't take that as an insult. It's just a random order, and that's just where you landed. They can all hit. Brooke Clemens batting here, hits a shot to third, bobbled, and the tag out on the pickup by the shortstop. Uh, play made by Natalia Rodriguez to end it on the shot from Brooke Clemens, who broke all of her high school records for home runs. She hit one hard there. Aruza Rieta and Wenger, two and three in the order. And on down through, as you saw out there. Again, we'll give that to you in portions. So there's much more batting order than what you just saw on the screen. That was, I guess, uh, a little less than a half of the batting order. 10 there and another 15 to come behind it. 25 hitters. You know, actually, let me correct that. Make it 24 hitters in the order for Wicked Webb. One of the pitchers, Ashley LaGuardia, will pitch her inning. However, she will not hit. She uh, made that choice herself, so we'll see 24 batters in the order for Wicked Webb. Pitch number one at the bottom of the first is in the dirt for a ball, and a familiar face in the circle, pitching to that leadoff hitter we just mentioned, Legere, from the Lady Canes, Samantha, 2015 grad. And the pitch is coming from Danae Chapman of Arizona Storm. Danae just played in our 16-year-old championship game moments ago, if you were with us for that. She pitched a good block of that championship contest. Defense out on the field right now for Monster Mash. Florida, Texas, New Jersey in the outfield. Alabama, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Texas in the infield. And Arizona pitching to Florida. Another great geographic mix defensively. That ball is bunted and it'll be a foul call. Waiting to see if that was going to be an out call or a foul call on the bunt. It hit the, hit the batter. If you're out of the box, then you're out. You're still in the box, foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Set up that a little bit more information on that defense for you here of Monster Mash. Chapman pitching to Clemens. Brooke Clemens behind the plate. 
Brooke at that line. Shot to end the top of the first. Knocked down by Callip. This ball is lifted to center and caught in center field. Jocelyn Myers with the catch. Jocelyn is flanked by Katrina Polkeri in left and Donna Conrad in right. It's Cynthia Merringer at shortstop this inning. Mary Catherine Bonamy at third base. Stacy Mayer at second. Shelby Barrick at first base as Luisa Rieta now batting for Wicked Webb from Gold Coast Hurricanes, Gianna. Ground ball in the infield into the shortstop hole. Good strong throw across and the 6-3 put out in the books. Two down with Katie Wenger coming to bat. Wenger now up. And hey, you can get involved here. Don't throw a no Twitter today. Use hashtag TC Sports as you watch our All-American game. When you tweet, hashtag TC Sports. Get in the game with that hashtag today. The player's probably going to throw out a few tweets from the dugouts. We told them pregame. This is the one game where that's allowed. Don't hesitate. Feel free to share your thoughts from the dugout. So if you're out there watching your daughter, your friend, your family member, or just somebody you uh, are enjoying watching, let us know about it. Hashtag TC Sports popped up behind third base and grabbed a quick inning for the defense. Mary Catherine Bonamy catches that pop up by Wenger, and we're off to the second. No score. Challenging, Challenging. today along the coast. Here in Plantation, Florida, Fort Lauderdale area is the location. Into the second inning we go, and Jocelyn Myers will bat. Jocelyn just played center field and got a fly ball to record an out. Now her chance to hit. The pitcher, Kayla Smith. We mentioned before, she is the only pitcher scheduled to pitch two innings today. Everybody else is going to throw one. So Danae Chapman from Arizona Storm just threw a nice sharp inning in her three outs of work. Got some good defensive help. Bouncing ball to short, picked up. Donaldson throws it across, and 6-3, clean out again. And a good backup by the right fielder. Fundamental play going on for the Wicked Web defense. Kiara Jenkins from right field came to back up the throw from Shortstop Haley Donaldson into the glove of Alex Miller. Yeah, Donaldson, great job. Really good fundamentals on that open glove. Short release to contact. You know, and Thad, you mentioned too, outfielders backing up. I say it all the time. We teach this at my camps and clinics. There are three Bs, ball, bag, backup. Everybody should be moving on the field. Everyone has a job to do. If the ball's hit to you, you field it. If the ball's not hit to you, you go to your bag. If you're an infielder and outfielders, you should always be moving and backing up. Leah McGovern of TC Tremors pops one up, and Haley Donaldson uh, fortunate to get the draw at shortstop the second inning. The first two balls go to short. <laughs> Doing a good job at scooping up the outs. It's all about the timing, right place, right time, and Donaldson has been the, the outmaker on the first two batters as McGovern popped it up. Uh, the pop-up induced by a great off-speed pitch. So Katie, excuse me, Kayla Smith really showing what it's like to change speeds. Kayla gets a hard hit ball to third. Safe at first base, legging it down the line is Sarah Crawford. Crawford hit it hard and bounced it off the third baseman who retrieved it, couldn't quite get it across in time. That was Chandler Middlebrook. Crawford's just going to get around this ball. A little bit of a bobble is going to give enough time for her to get down the line. You can see that little bobble. She goes down, bare hands. It's a great job of trying to recover on the bare hand. She doesn't go back to the glove. Cynthia Merringer hits it to center field, and that ball bounced into the glove out in center. Good effort out there to try to snag the out by Kylan Becker, but the ball did skip, and it's a base hit for Merringer. And it sends Crawford to third base with two outs. You see this ball going to come down. Great effort. You can see the short hop. Really great effort to try and get the glove underneath there. Maybe if the gloves turn the opposite way, she gets it underneath the ball. But Crawford running Team Mizuno all the way around. Great job so far. Very skilled all the way around for both these clubs. Shelby Barrick from Impact Gold now batting. 
lower 60 mile per hour pitches from Kayla Smith. That last one at 57. We saw 62 a minute ago. Smith working her second inning. This ball hit towards short. Donaldson makes all three outs. Shelby Barrick hit it to the sixth spot, and good enough for all three of them is Haley Donaldson with a big inning of work, and there's no score after one and a half. We'll see today on this televised game a chance to carry that on into their college years, maybe get some or all their school uh, handled by their talent on the ball field. We go into the bottom of the second. It's Kirsten Martin from Houston Power. Her team just won the 16 and under elite championship game on CBS Sports Network earlier today, and now she's hitting in the number four spot for the Wicked Web All-American team. Kirsten Martin swings through that, and she's got an 0-2 count. Stephanie Bryden pitching for Monster Mash. Bryden was at my holiday camp last year. I got to work with her on a rise ball, a little bit of a drop ball. It's always fun to see these kids. You come back, give them a hug, or see the parents. Bryden throwing the curveball in the outside corner and gets the strikeout looking. Kirsten Martin is out for out number one. Kirsten wanted to say either during that last game, which she didn't know she'd be in today, but she did know about this one ahead of time. She'd be in this All-American game. And she said, just if you can, tell my family and friends how much I appreciate, how much help they've given me to get where I am today. Kirsten wanted to be sure to get the appreciation out for the support network. There's a single solidly hit. Good swing, good work by Kylan Becker, Miami Stingrays. We've seen Kylan before, and she continues to impress. Yeah. You can see the way that Becker's going to get this pitch. It's a little up in the zone. She just drives it right back up the middle. So Becker capitalizing on a pitch early on in the count and just driving it back up the middle. Kylan's personal approach is improve every at bat, she said. She uh, appreci appreciates that her coaches have taught her how to be a slapper. They converted her, and her approach to the plate, improve every at bat. She gets a base hit with one out in the bottom of the second for her All-American team. And there's the outmaker, Haley Donaldson. Haley is batting for Wicked Webb with the score tied 0-0. Chance to make some noise on CBS Sports Network. Haley, just a sophomore, one of the younger players in today's game. We have four freshmen, 2017 grads, on the rosters today and a handful of sophomores, Haley being one of those. Makes a big hack. Haley also plays some basketball. She's from Fort Collins, Colorado. Enjoys a little snowboarding. She said her favorite baseball player, Ted Williams. Wow. Oh. Going to the Wayback Machine. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a fan. If she goes back uh, in the baseball years, looking at some of those guys that played the sport back in the day before it was so big and televised. Haley's going to drop this into shallow right and safe at second base on a quick throw. Good effort there, but Kylan Becker slides in safely to make that a single for Haley Donaldson, so two runners on with one out. Donaldson Becker out there, and Natalie Cutright coming to bat. Let's step back out of our booth and out to the fray with Amanda. Well, I'm here with Brianna Baker for Monster Mash, and I had a question that I wanted to ask her because I noticed on her bio she put three different favorite teams, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Florida. And I wanted to kind of pin her down and make her choose which one because they're all such big rivals in the Women's College World Series. So what is your answer? I have no idea. I just love watching all of them. I don't I don't really know yet. They they all just have good qualities and they're just all great and I just want to be one of them. What's your favorite thing about watching college softball? Um, I don't know. I just like watching and like getting like I admire all of them. I just want to like take what they do and put it into my game. That's awesome. I'm sure that you'll get some good experience and be able to be there one day. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks, guys. I just wanted to ask her, because, you know, Tennessee and Oklahoma played each other in the national championship game, and then Florida and Tennessee in the SEC. So I noticed that, and it stuck out to me. <laughs> Amanda unable to get a clear commitment, though, out no. of that. Way to stay uh, right right down the middle. Just going just gonna to take my time before I make my decisions. <laughs> Natalie Cutright is batting for the Wicked Web. Cutright, a left-handed batter who doesn't like to eat breakfast. Luckily, this is an afternoon game. Probably had time to work in a little lunch. And now she's taking an A-B on national television. A couple of strikes against her. She hits this into the right center gap. Tough ball. Caught in right center. Tag up from second to third by Becker. What a play out in right field. That was fantastic. The defense behind Stephanie Bride, and it's Donna Conrad, who we're hoping to maybe catch up with a little later in this game. Conrad, a great running catch. Well, this ball just hit hard to the outfield. You can see it's on the outside corner. It looks like a backdoor curve that comes back over the plate. But Conrad, holy cow, going out there, 
making an outstanding catch. That's definitely a web gem. So uh, appropriately named one of the teams, the Wicked Web, showing what the, the leather of the web can do when it's outstretched, making that catch. Yeah, Donna crossing over, playing for Monster Mash, but she's showing off the leather. This might work, though, it's so shallow, but Conrad closes on it and catches the third out of the inning. So Conrad, a couple of plays to keep Wicked Web off the board, and we've got no score through two innings of our All-American game here in Plantation, Florida. Donna Conrad keeps us scoreless with this running catch in the gap. Defense has been applied. Ashley LaGuardia now in the circle, a 2014 grad, a high school senior this year, and LaGuardia sends one. Gets, gets all the juice out on that first pitch. She's ready to go 61 miles per hour up and over. And now she'll dig in and go to work. LaGuardia pitching to Lauren Newmark, the catcher this half inning. Kirsten Martin playing first base. Morgan Toll at second. Berkeley Callip at third. Samantha Legere at short. Danny Jostin in left. Kiara Jenkins in center. And Reese Guevara in right. There's Courtney Shea with the leadoff at bat from Birmingham Thunderbolts at Alabama. Courtney Shea is the batter. And for Courtney, she's wearing that number 93. That's in honor of her father, Richard, who played football at Auburn and wore number 93. So she decided to carry on the 93 tradition in the family. Parents Beth and Richard made the trip here to Rising Stars from Mountain Brook, Alabama, enjoying watching their daughter, who plans to ver or to uh, commit and sign later this fall with Auburn, following dad's footsteps. Walk, and she's on base, the leadoff on base. It's Courtney Shea, and there's a look at that ongoing batting order now as we hit Sarah Beth Wengard. She's due up now, and there's a look down through who's coming up in the next 10 to bat for Monster Mash. There's strike one on the first pitch out of the hand of Ashley LaGuardia to the new batter with nobody out and one on. Boy, that is super windy. You can hear it in the mics and a lot of these athletes having to adjust, not just to a game situation where they're not used to their neighbors, but having to deal with the windy conditions. Affects the pitch at times, locating it, the way it moves, as well as obviously any balls hit up in the air. Very important on a day like this to make sure you're backing up. This ball fisted and popped up, jumping out and making the play for the out. Quickly from behind the plate, Lauren Newmark thought about a throw over to first base and uh, lost it out of her hand, but it just bounced across the infield. No damage done. Good jump by Newmark. 62 mile per hour pitch just jammed up Wengerd. Ramada is a national sponsor of the 2013 Triple Crown television series on CBS Sports Network. For the best available rate guaranteed, book at ramada.com. Terms and conditions apply. Ramada, you do your thing, leave the rest to us. Ramada.com. Thanks to Ramada. Check them out, ramada.com. Sarah Beth Wengard from Sarasota Heat. There is a swing through foul tip and hanging on to it is Newmark. Curve ball, 60 miles an hour on the outside corner. LaGuardia really showing that she can throw the ball in the low 60s. Lots of great late movement. And she's already verbal to Princeton University. And here's Nikki Alden from Gold. New Jersey, Pennsylvania based group. Nikki Alden to the plate with two outs and one on. And there is a pop out. Alden is done, and we are done with the top of the third. Reese Guevara is due up to lead off the bottom of the third for Wicked Webb with no score in the game from the Hudson Valley Hurricanes. So I'm going to talk you through Reese Guevara's at bat, and then our play-by-player, our big play-by-play -play debut for Donna Conrad is going to be on Chandler Middlebrook, the next batter. So Donna, just you can kind of get ready, do your deep breathing exercises, and you're going to talk us through the at bat of the next batter, Chandler Middlebrook from Wagner Sports. And right now it's Reese Guevara of Hudson Valley Hurricanes, a 2017 grad. So she's one of the four players here today who are currently in their freshman year. Pretty cool stage to be on for Reese, playing with uh, seniors and juniors and some sophomores. Getting a nice exposure here is Reese Guevara. 
for the defense this inning. It's Kirsten Thomas pitching to Sarah Crawford. Kirsten Thomas in that pink 22. Bringing it from the circle, just threw it 61 miles per hour on that last pitch. She's down 3-0. Keeps herself in the count with a strike delivered nicely right down the pipe to Sarah Crawford, the catcher. Shelby Barrick at first, Megan O'Bear at second, Mary Catherine Bonamy at third. It's Emily Lockton at short. Leah McGovern, Katrina Polkeri, and Marissa Gurgle in the outfield this inning. And there is a walk, so the leadoff batter on base for the first time today for Wicked Web, Reese Guevara. And take a look at the pitch. You can see it comes in. Actually, it looks like it may have gone off of her shoulder or helmet. Maybe a little bill in the brim of the hat. Spot. Now up is uh, uh -oh. now is uh, Chandler Middlebrook, and she's 17. Uh, her nickname is Mama Chan, and she makes bows for her team. She takes a strike. And a ball high, and the runner goes. Oh. So the throw down to second base, just about in time, but the immediate contact by Reese Guevara, and Guevara is successful on the steal of second base. A nice throw down to second base, but you can see it's just inside the line, but it comes out on the tag. So nice effort, but just can't sell it and get the out. All right, Donna, here's the next pitch to Chandler. And And the runner advances. The third baseman makes the play. Mary Catherine Bonami. That's, Bonami. She's, she's going with Bonami on there. Bonami. That's, a, that's a new one too. <laughs> Throws it across to Shelby Barrick. And here's a look at the next chunk of our batting order coming up for Wicked Webb. Caitlin Huffman, Danny Jostin, Alex Miller, the next three with Callup Lane, Mark Copolis, new Mark Jenkins on down the line. So if you're looking for somebody, that's where they're at. Another slow roller to third. And played again, the five to three put out. Bonamy over to Barrick, couple oh, down. Love the way that Bonamy is gonna check the runner on that. Take a look at the pitch, however, it's on the inside corner. Jammed up just a little bit, but Bonamy doing a really good job over at the hot spot at third to check the runner and get the out. Here comes Danny Jostin of Texas Shockwave D. Marini. Danny, a senior in high school this year. Take ball one. Donna, you're uh, with us here in the booth, but you've still got a couple more innings of defense to play, a couple more outfield innings. Uh, outfield is your primary spot, right? I think I yeah. remember reading that that's your preferred position. Yeah. Pretty cool that the timing worked out that when you happen to be out there, they hit that ball in the gap. I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. good timing by you to happen to be assigned to that inning. Yeah. And then you cash in the play. Well, Donna, we're going to let you get back over to your dugout. I think you might have an at-bat coming up here pretty soon yeah. in the next inning, so we'll look forward to seeing you. Donna, your debut. Congratulations on being here today. Thank you so much. Good job. All right, that's Donna Conrad, and we'll watch her play throughout the course of the day. Pretty, pretty cool opportunity for Donna to not only play with players from all over the United States, but even uh, go ahead and sample her, one of her hopeful careers. There's a bouncer back to the middle, and Kirsten Thomas gets out of her inning with no runs allowed. We stay scoreless. She's got some sisters out there, got some pitching in their lines as well. Amber, 17 years old, got Callie, 15, Chloe, 11, Jenna, 9, and Charlotte, 7. So for those of you looking for a pipeline of talent, <laughs> keep an eye on Amber and the, the sisters. It's a shallow pop on the first pitch, and that's taken in shallow right by Reese Guevara. One away, Guevara, Kylan Becker, and Danny Jostin in the outfield this inning for Wicked Webb. It's Natalia Rodriguez at short. At third base, Chandler Middlebrook. Gianna Aruza Rieta is at second. Katie Wenger at first. Alex Miller is catching Amber Grove. That was Brooke Hardy who popped it up on the first pitch. Brooke of East Coast Firecrackers. And that brings Rachel Taylor of Team Mizuno out of Florida to the plate. A little love for the catcher, Alex Miller, coming from the dugout as Alex worked hard on that first pitch of the at-bat to keep it in front. Now this one catches a piece of Rachel Taylor, hit by pitch, and Taylor takes first base, bringing Mary Catherine Bonamy to the plate from Birmingham Thunderbolts. Time for us to rejoin Amanda. 
I'm here with Wicked Web's Olivia Markopoulos. And Olivia, what is it that's so interesting about your family and special? Um, my granddad played college hockey. My dad played college baseball. My mom runs marathons and was a softball player all of her life. And my grandma also played college softball. So softball has been in my history for a while and I'm continuing the trend. And what exactly have you learned from all these athletes in your family? Um, how to balance athletics and school and just be a great person all around. She's just the next on the list of athletes in the Markopoulos family. Thank and we you. Talked Thank you. We talked about the generation yeah. you know, passed down now that's starting to take effect with these female athletes, the young women who can now look up to some role models or some family members, and there's a great example with Olivia. Yeah, definitely. I think that's really what it's all about. That was what uh, you know, Title IX was made for, to give opportunities in the classroom, but as, as well on the athletic field for, for women, for team sports. Mary C Catherine Bonamy almost wore one on the left sleeve. Mary Catherine said, hey, make sure you say hi to my mom. She's watching back at home, Jennifer. Dad David made the trip here to Florida to Rising Stars. Played some football, wide receiver at Alabama. I guess you can call that back in the day. And sister Josie is a level nine gymnast. Josie at uh, 12 years old and John David, the brother, at six years old. Pop up on the infield and the catch at shortstop. A little couple of outs now. Amber, Hung up here. Yeah, Amber Grove, the pitcher, doing a really good job of working the curveball on both sides of the plate, throwing it back door and off the plate, getting some really great spin. Katrina Pole Carey shows bunt with two down in the top of the fourth inning and Monster Mash batting. Pole Carey, 2015 grad, Lady Bandits out of Florida. Runner at first base is Rachel Taylor with two outs. Rachel was hit by a pitch. Grove sends that inside. Two ball count. Rachel Taylor, that runner at first base, also plays goalie in soccer, and she plays some first base and catcher, and you see a great crossover of skills. I love goalies when they get a chance to catch or play first base. You just see some natural tendencies on the ball. Yeah. Or not natural, maybe, but refined tendencies on the ball well, from Rachel, that kind of experience. Rachel plays for uh, Team Mizuno, Ray Celeste, the coach of that team or manager of that team. I know him very well, and he's a huge proponent of kids playing a lot of different sports, doing different things. And, you know, that whole organization, Team Mizuno, throughout the U.S. does a great job of of really getting their kids focused, academics, ball, but also doing other things in life. They want them to be well-rounded people. Katrina Polcari draws the walk. Taylor moves down to second base. One other interesting point on Rachel Taylor out of Palm Har uh, Harbor, Florida. She's now at second base. There is Polcari at first. That runner at second base is a blue-eyed, red-headed lefty. Three recessive traits, yep. Rachel reported to us. <laughs> so uh, she, she went off script when she came into the world. And doing a great job today of uh, playing in this mix of top talent. She's out at second base is Taylor. First base is Paul Carey. And Donna Conrad, our new broadcast friend, is now batting the left-handed batter who made the great catch out in right field and fired it back in from the port side. Left-handed thrower, lefty hitter. Has an opportunity to break the scoreless tie in the top of the fourth. Right down the line, snagged fair. Nice play to get that ball in fair ground at first base. Katie Wenger and helps Amanda or helps Amber Grove get off the field. We move into the bottom of the fourth inning. Time for the defense of Monster Mash. Make their effort to keep the score scoreless. And the bats of Wicked Web this inning. Alex Miller of Tampa Mustangs now batting to be followed by Berkeley Callup and Megan Lane. Ball to third base, 5-3, sharp play over at third. Sarah Beth Wenger throws it to Rachel Taylor for the first out, and we'll rejoin Amanda Scarborough. I'm with Katrina Polcari of the Monster Mash team hanging out in the third base dugout. Katrina, what other sports do you play? Um, I play flag football, and I love to barrel race. I have four horses. As a matter of fact, when I grow up, I really want to be an inclined vet. And what other hobbies do you have? Um, I surf, and when I'm free, I love to work out and, like, you know, just get bigger and stronger, work on my swing, you know those type of things. And you had a really cool quote that was about being nervous. Why do you think it's important not to be nervous when you're out here? What do you what do you think you have to prove? Um, you have to prove you're the best. You know, it's just opportunities. You don't really have to, like, 
Yeah, just be the best like you can be. Like, don't be nervous. My coach always told me when I strike out or make an error on the field, he's like, don't be nervous. It's just opportunities to like achieve your dream, like get a scholarship, you know. Just don't be nervous and prove you're the best. In fact, that quote, guys, was don't be nervous. It's an opportunity to show that you are the best. And Katrina's out here trying to do that. Thanks to Katrina for her time in the middle of this game. She drew a walk last inning, but was stranded out there, and the score stayed at zeros. Berkeley Callup is batting 2-1 count with one away. It was Alex Miller grounding out to start this inning, and now of the TC Stars out of Colorado, Berkeley Callup is batting. Berkeley playing some third base today for her All-American team. She takes that pitch at 58 miles per hour, down and in for a 3-1 count. Katrina Polkeri, who Amanda just talked to, I loved when we asked what position she played, she said outfield or wherever you need me. Good answer, yeah. always a good answer. Brianna Baker is pitching. Baker Ooh. here gives up a shot right at the third base coach, and uh, only she only two, them. only two coaches per team. We can't afford. We, we can't mm. spare any. No, we don't have any extras. Uh, we'll find a couple, but uh, glad there's no damage done there. Brianna Baker, <laughs> Callup who hit it, is uh, happily. Getting back in the box after a is little he, scare. It's, it's is no, he scratching her? What do you making, think? Making a note of that. Okay, when this kid hits, <laughs> uh, I'll coach first next time around. Exactly. We'll flip-flop positions. Callup back in there with a full count from Brianna Baker. Baker gets the pop up. Left side, tough ball. Great catch from shortstop. Making the long run is Jocelyn Myers. Myers doing a really good job keeping her eye on the ball. We've talked about the wind all day long blowing from right to left. So that's going to take this ball further off the field. And look at her continue to run through the ball. Nice effort communicating with the third baseman. Again, they've never played together. Outstanding effort by the left side of the infield. It's a bunt offering that's fouled away. Brianna Baker pitching to Brooke Clemens. Clemens catching her second inning of two innings assigned to her. You see Megan Lane's information of the Clearwater Bombers. Megan left side at bat. Rachel Taylor at first, Logan Lilly at second, Sarah Beth Wengert at third. You saw Jocelyn Myers just make that great play in foul ground from the shortstop slot. Nikki Alden and Marissa Gurgle along with Danae Chapman in the outfield here in the bottom of the fourth. Clemens behind, behind the dish is a very good catcher. She's verbal to Florida, as we mentioned earlier, so I know Tim Walton's going to be very excited. She reminds me a lot of Brittany Schutte, who used to be a Gator. Excellent catcher, excellent hitter. So uh, Tim Walton always does a good job of finding those big, strong catchers that control the game, hit for power. To see her presence behind the plate, the way she works with her pitchers. Very fundamentally skilled. Ball works its way in the left field and on base goes Megan Lane of the Clearwater Bombers. Megan on with two outs. Take a look at the swing. It's going to cross over. So she back steps, crosses over, and then takes the outside pitch and drives it the opposite way. A lot of stuff going on there, but she does a good job of keeping her timing intact and gets to contact and hits that outside pitch the opposite way. Two outs. Watch the runner here. Megan Lane broke all of her middle school track records. Said her best thing her coaches have taught her to use her speed to her advantage. So we might get a chance to see that speed on the base paths with two down, bottom of the fourth, no score. Heard earlier from Olivia Markopoulos about her family lineage of athletic participation. Now Olivia left side at bat with two down. There goes the runner. Throw down. Not in time. Safely stolen by Megan Lane, the 2015 grad out of Brooksville, Florida. Megan playing for the Clearwater Bombers just down the road. The team plays a lot at the Eddie Seymour Complex over in Clearwater, Florida. Nice facility over there. Those, the, the group of teams that have come through, Tony Gratt and the guys that run that program, just doing a really good job. Patrick Afruni, who's also involved with, uh, with Ecker College. You just see you know, a lot of great people in that Clearwater community doing a lot of good stuff for these women. And, Laying a perfect example of a young kid who's got a lot of talent and is going to do a lot of special things with her career. Quick talk in the circle with the runner out of second base. A couple of possibilities here of uh, you know, relaying pitch calls and uh, again, new pitcher and catcher working together, trying to get things sorted out, making sure they've got a plan on. It's uh, the speed of Megan Lane over at 
third base. She just asked for a rerun of the signs, so there actually might be some signs going on. You don't see that a lot of times in the All-American yeah. games because the coaches just say, hey, you do what you want to do. But Lane looked like she might have been asking for some more help. She's getting a good, strong break off a of second is Lane. There's a strike call and a 3-1 count now to Olivia Markopoulos. Megan Lane said, hey, make sure uh, my family, here's how much I appreciate them. Robbie Lane, 22 years old, and Scott and Tracy out of Brooksville. Megan, thanks you for everything you've done to help her, and she loves the family environment she lives in. There she takes third base on a full count now, I believe is gonna be what we got on the board with two down. Lane steals a couple and she's at third. Well, and look how quick she is. The throw is gonna go down, but she doesn't even slide because the third baseman doesn't get back to the bag. So she's really stealing, not always on the catcher, but on the defenders. It's so important to make sure the defenders are at the bag. The throw can be perfect to the bag to get the runner that's stealing. But if you don't have the defender there to make the catch and apply the tag, it's obviously not gonna complete the play. Full count, two outs. Looking for first blood here. Wicked Webb in the bottom of the fourth. They've got a chance. 60 feet away is Megan Lane. Olivia Markopoulos, a lover of bacon, she told us. Keeping a, a nice, uh, she's, she's well, she's, she's pretty fit for a bacon eater. Here it is, 3-2. Got her, and the 2013 All-State pitcher out of New York, Brianna Baker, keeps the zero on the board. Good work by Baker, getting around the speed of Lane. Nicolette Mikulowski to take to the circle of the SJ Mystics out of New Jersey. Nicolette will now pitch. Love the eye red and white. That's pretty awesome. It is awesome. Nicolette fully adorned for this appearance. Does it cut glare? I don't know. Doesn't matter when it looks that cool. <laughs> looks good. <laughs> Functional or not. Exactly. Do it. Nicolette pitching this inning to Kirsten Martin, Kirsten of Houston Power. We've seen her a few times today, 55 miles per hour on the last pitch to Martin. Katie Wanger at first base, Natalie Cutright at second, Berkeley Caliph at third, Haley Donaldson at shortstop. It's Danny Joston in left, Kiara Jenkins in center, and Kylan Becker in right field. Logan Lilly, the batter, Logan out of Florida. She's a 2015 grad. To lead things off right in the top of the fifth for Monster Mash. There's a strike on the edge. All the pitchers here this afternoon, Thad, really have been doing a great job of painting the corners, getting ahead of hitters. We have not seen a lot of free passes. It doesn't matter if it is an all-star game, an all-American game like this, or a regular softball game. You got to keep the free passes to a minimum. And as I talk about the free passes, there's a walk. But that's really one of the keys to putting a lot of goose eggs up on the scoreboard. You got to limit those free passes. Logan Lilly down to first base and Stacy Mayer. Stacy hits a rocket on the first pitch through the 5-6 hole and she is on base. First and second now with nobody out. Stacy of East Coast Firecrackers. Solid swing and a base hit. And this pitch is just going to get peppered through the 5-6 hole. It's on the white part of the plate and just gets driven past. Look at the way the front foot is down yet again. We talk about it. Great hitters will get the front foot down before the hands come forward. It levels and steadies the eyes so that you can hit the ball very square. With runners on first and second and nobody out. The biggest threat of the game to this point, Danae Chapman. Just 14 years of age, a 2017 grad, playing in this 18 and under All-American game. Danae, a big A-B. Hits it hard to third, knocked down. Tag applied just in time. Callup got it done. Callup of the TC Stars out of Colorado kept that ball in the infield and records the force out. Well, good presence of mind to know that you knock the ball down, you're not gonna get the out at first, but because it's a force situation, she's gonna be able to make the tag, so really good job of Heads up play, potential for a double play in that situation. If you do field it cleanly, step on the bag, go across to one. But the key is she gets the out, Dad. And Callup sold the tag too, really uh, locked the ball up, kept the bare hand on top. It's gonna be contact there, easy to lose the ball in that as you're scrambling. Yep. Callup, good job of recovering for one out. So now it's Mayer at second base, Chapman at first base, and Stephanie Bryden hitting one to shortstop, Haley Donaldson bounces off the glove of Callup and it's gonna be everybody safe. Bases are loaded, so two TC stars on the left side of the infield. Donaldson, they're dealing with some hard hit balls over there, a couple of rockets in this inning, and 
Monster Mash, a big threat right here. Yeah, a couple of really hard hit balls, but this is a play that needs to be made. You can see that she just takes her eye off of it a little bit. Now, the other thing is that when your teammate is that close and the ball is, is thrown at you hard, it can be tough to field that. But both those ladies playing for the, the uh, Triple Crown stars uh, know each other, so you got to be able to make that play, get that lead runner. Kirsten Thomas in the box now as we have reached into the favorite part of the lineup for Michelle. It's the pitcher's portion of the lineup now. It started with Danae Chapman, the first pitcher to bat for Monster Mash. There'll be seven in a row here. Here's a good, uh, strong swing by Kirsten Thomas. Going to hit it to left. Tag up coming. Throw from left field. Comes in. Bounces in and safely in with the tag up in the score. Sack fly. Stacy Mayer scores the first run of the All-American game on the sack fly by Kirsten Thomas. Well, this ball hit very hard. Thomas going to drive it all the way out in the left field. It's a nice throw home, actually. It looks like if the throw could have been caught, even though it was slightly up the line, she might have been able to make the tag. But great job all the way around for the Monster Mash to get that first run up on the board. And so we break those zeros here in the top of the fifth inning. It took a while, but finally on the board, Monster Mash. Brianna Baker of TC Tremors of New York. Brianna pitched earlier. Gets a chance to swing here. Another lefty hitter. Plays soccer and basketball along with fast pitch softball. So we're seeing a, a trend or a theme here today. Something to learn from young players who are watching out there. It's uh, Sometimes that ability to augment your game comes through other games. Here's a look at that last six. We haven't shown you everything quite yet. We showed you the first 20, so we'll get a look at the final six in this 26 batter order. And one run in, and that will be it for the inning. The strikeout recorded as Baker is out, but one run up. Monster Match has the lead. Wicked Webb coming to bat, bottom of five. He will handle the first base coaching duties in this bottom of the fifth, and Gina of Miami Dade. She'll be over at third base. So thanks to Gina and Tim. They're coaching in the dugouts here and on the field for Wicked Webb. And PJ and Dale coaching Monster Mash. Fun to put those college coaches in the dugouts with these high school age players. Lead off strong single up the middle from Lauren Newmark of Gold Coast Hurricanes. Ball gets loose now and Newmark gets at least another bag. Thinking about three. Here comes the throw. Aggressive pace running. Single plus two. Well, Newmark does a really good job of getting that single and then is going to go down to second. You can see the way she's going to drive this ball right back up the middle. It's going to take second on the overthrow. It gets past the second baseman and the pitcher. Catcher's got to go all the way down to the screen and because of that she's going to dive also into third. It looks like she's going to be removed from the game. I think when she came into third, she hit a little bit hard. Yeah, Lauren's going to head off the field. Now nah, she's saying she wants to stay. This is an All-American game. I'm not going anywhere, says, says Newmark. Lauren, a catcher in this game. She goes aggressively hard into third base. Man, she never hesitated around second base. She was going all the way, really forced the issue on the defense. And yeah, you see her dinged up on the landing, now laughing it off over at third base. Lauren Newmark. Her hobby, crafting hearts made with Swarovski crystals for her business, heartsbylulu.com. So I worked in a little plug for her, heartsbylulu.com. That's the runner at third base, Lauren Newmark. You can check out her collection at heartsbylulu.com. Kiara Jenkins, the batter of Legends Elite in Virginia. Takes ball two. 58 miles per hour on the most recent pitch. Kiera reports to us that her other standout athlete in her family, her brother Kevin, 11 years old, plays some football among other things. Another speedster here is Kiera Jenkins and that's what you didn't want. Put her on first base on the free pass and I would guess within one pitch, Kiera is going to be a second base. She's got the speed. She's a base stealer. Yep. Classic first and third situation. Middle infielders are going to be pulled up. It's a very tough defensive play, even when you know you're infield. Natalia Rodriguez now. 
into the box. She's a 14-year-old, just a freshman, 2017 grad. There goes the runner. Throw's going to go through, and the runner stops now into a rundown. Thinking about trying to, and now she'll take it. So it's the delayed steal as uh, finally executed by Kiara Jenkins. She made the throw head to third. Good job by Lauren Newmark of drawing attention to keep her teammate alive. Well, Jenkins is going to take off. You see the throw is going to go down. This is actually really gutsy defensive play, that throw. I think if Jenkins would have gone all the way to the bag, she probably would have been safe. But you can see the throw now comes over to third, and that gives Jenkins the opportunity to get into second. Rodriguez to shortstop thrown out on the 6-3 and the runners cannot advance. Good work there at short to keep the runner in place. Cynthia Merringer on the pickup. Just enough of a head turn to freeze the runner. Newmark, keep her where she's at. So now one away, a threat here for Wicked Webb. Down by one, this ball floated to right, it's gonna work. That ball is down off the bat of Kayla Smith. One run has scored, here comes another. Now. Between second and third, got a rundown. Jenkins trying to find a way out of it. And there it is. The runner will move over to third base, so the RBI single for Kayla Smith. She'll get around to third on the rundown of Jenkins. We're tied at one on the run scored by Newmark. Well, that's a lot of throws going back and forth on the rundown again it's tough at times when you're playing with the defense that ain't re really know but a good job by the defense to get the throw in and hang up the runner in between third and home we usually like it to be one throw and a tag so here with the speed of Jenkins she induces about four throws before she's finally out but a good job also getting all the way over to third on those numbers of throw. You got to be ready to step on the bag. And Kayla Smith does just that. She's waiting in order to get to third. This ball will find its way through and will score Kayla Smith. The RBI base hit, Madison Canby, who waited a long time to get her chance to bat and performs admirably. Canby, the RBI single, Canby of Gold Coast Hurricanes, has her team on top. Two to one. And Canby with this runner on third gets a pitch that's over the plate. She hops it up the middle. Nice defensive effort trying to knock that down, but that's going to score the run with two outs. And again, we talked about how important it is for Kayla Smith to get to third, even though her teammate Jenkins was thrown out in the middle in that rundown. Smith was waiting to step on the third. She's safe, and then the base hit scores the go ahead run. That rundown play was started off the throw from right field by our old friend Donna Conrad, who we've seen in yep. a variety of capacities today, making diving catches, broadcasting on CBS Sports Network, and making a strong throw to the plate that started that, I don't know, 9 2 5 2 1 6 2 5 1, or whatever that was scored as. <laughs> <laughs> Run down. Yeah. Mikulowski is the batter. Nicolette up there, and you see that last five in the order. LaGuardia, Canby, Mikulowski, Grove, and Weller, the pitcher's portion of the batting order here at the bottom of the order. Since the pitchers are featured in the circle, that's why they're put at the bottom of the order in this game. They get the most face time on the broadcast, so therefore they all hit at the bottom. But as we've talked about in the past, they can hit. They can hit. That's right. And you can tell that. from the approach of Mikulowski, she is not new to the batter's box at all. Good looking uh, presence in the box, and she'll draw a walk. That makes it first and second with two away. 59 miles per hour again on the gun on that most recent pitch. Mahalia Gibson trying to work her way out of this in the bottom of the fifth. We were scoreless when we started this inning. The one run by Monster Mash answered by two for Wicked Webb. Amber Grove of Texas Chaos. She pitched the fourth, now bats in the fifth. One, one count. Grove tells us she has eight cats. Not sure what you do with that, exactly. It's a lot of cats to a lot of litter stay boxes. with. It's, it's a lot of time. Amber fouled it off down the line. Works her way back into the box. Amber will continue. She's a senior this year. She'll play at Florida International FIU. So leaving Texas and coming to the state we're in right now, Florida. Here she's going to seeing I one through. Will it score a run? Yep. Conrad can't get anybody from right field on that. Just two 
shallowly hit and another RBI. It's Grove driving one in as Canby scores and Mikulowski moves to third base. Well, Grove is going to hit this ball in the perfect position. She just gets it past the first baseman. Nice effort and then past the second baseman. Both of them, their gloves a little bit high. Try, try to get that glove down on the ground. So right now the Wicked Web doing a good job of just going station to station and pushing some runs across the plate with two outs. Grove hangs up in between first and second, and now she's thrown out, was trying to draw the throw, finally did, but the run will not be able to score. That was Audrey Weller batting. She'll continue her at bat. She's the 25th of 25 batters is Weller. So it will be Weller to come back to the bat, but here it's the third out recorded on the throw out. I think that they've been uh, very tight. We've seen a couple of free passes come back to haunt the pitchers, but really we've seen some good defense. Uh, there have been some, some nice balls, uh, shots hit. Uh, defense has made some good plays on them. But, you know, I think the big thing to remember, too, is that this is the first time a lot of these hitters are facing pitchers. So that can be tough on the hitters as well. That ball is toward the gap and flagged down quick enough to hold that to a single. It's Mahalia Gibson who just pitched. She leads off in the top of the sixth with her team down by two and sets the table. Well, this ball is just peppered, roped right back up the middle. You can see the way that she's just going to get the hands down and extends through the ball. And the ball just jumps off the bat. That brings Haley Wiseman of Team Mizuno to the plate. Strike one to Haley. 58 miles per hour from the pitcher here, Madison Canby. Madison, a 2016 grad, lives right here in the area near our ball fields in Plantation, playing for Gold Coast Hurricanes. Madison told me that she, uh, this season, hit the 60 mile per hour mark. She's 15 years old, 2016 grad. She got into the 60s with her fastball, and here she gets a strikeout on a strong pitch through the bat of Haley Wiseman at 58 miles per hour. Well, she's doing a good job of locating the ball. A lot of times we talk with these young pitchers when they come to camps and clinics, and we talk to them about locating the ball. I'd rather see a pitch at 58 miles an hour on the corner than one at 60 or 62 over the middle of the plate. It's all about locating the ball, getting the balance of the hitter on their front foot. So that means switching speeds. And then if you can add in some movement as you get older, it will really make you into a good pitcher. Shannon Brantley of Delaware Cobras pops it up in the breezes and the winds blowing around, no problem. Caught at shortstop by Samantha Legere. Stays with it and Brantley pops out. So Wiseman struck out, Brantley popped out with two down. We are now back up to the top of the batting order. Brantley was assigned the 26th and final position in the batting order. Again, if you missed it earlier, that's nothing to do with her hitting ability and everything to do with a random assignment of batting spots in this All-American game. Runner goes with two down and will move into scoring position. Ball flagged down, Legere keeps it on the infield, but now Mahalia Gibson is into scoring position with two down. And it's Emily Lockton who singled to start this game off, the first batter in the top of one, and stole a base, Lockton of Gators Gold. Base hit here, should get it back to a one-run margin. Good, strong swing, that ball's gonna drift and drift out of play. One and one count for Canby, who's pitching right now of Pembroke Pines, Florida. And there you see Lockton re-preparing for her next swing. Mad Dog, Madison Canby, with that 60-plus fastball that she's started to work into her repertoire, throws a rise. Fastball, change up and curve, or change up around 48 miles per hour. Starting to add more differentiation. Now that one got real close to taking out a camera operator. That got the piece of the scissor lift. And I'm glad we're all uh, safe and happy over here on the third base side. That was a rocket from Emily Lockton. I was going to mention too, we, we haven't seen the, the long ball today. The breeze, yeah. we'll call it wind, blowing in pretty firmly from out to in. This pitch is going to sail over the head of the catcher and to the backstop. So the runner moves now down to third base and into the 60-foot position goes Gibson. She's close, can be lost control. That one over the top of her catcher, Caitlin Huffman. 
typically see it, you know, a couple of home runs in these All-American games, but in today's contest with the wind blowing the way it is, it's tough. We've seen some balls hit hard that just aren't carrying at all with that stiff wind. Yeah, and that wind basically blowing from right to left, so it'd be tough to get anything out of the park down the right field line for sure, but even down the left field line, you'd have to make sure that uh, you drove it into the gap. It probably would end up just barely fair. <laughs> Full count, two outs. Lockton sends it into the middle of the infield and again settling and hauling it in. Samantha Legere, Scarborough. Who plays for the TC Stars. Haley Donaldson, what is uh, what is it that you overcome every day out here playing softball? Well, um, I was born deaf and I have a cochlear implant and that's where every day is being deaf. Yeah. And what what is like it for practicing games? How do you handle that situation? Um, well, I have really supportive teammates and coaches, and I feel like they help me a lot. But it's definitely challenging at times, but other times it's, you know, it's just like everyone else. And what's your favorite thing about playing softball? I mean, just the game, everything about it. I love it. Yeah. And what do you want to be when uh, you're done playing softball? I, I want to be a vet. A vet. Yeah. Awesome, Haley Donaldson, so sweet, love her. Uh -huh. <laughs> Haley wants to be a vet, lives in a great place for that, by the way, Fort Collins, Colorado, home yeah. of Colorado State University, one of the top veterinary medicine programs in the country. And uh, Haley might be able to stay close to home with her parents, Kim and John, or she can go wherever she wants, but uh, at least she's got local options to study veterinary medicine. There's a strikeout to lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. Haley Wiseman is pitching, and Wiseman hangs up the K against Audrey Weller. So with Weller, out that will take us back to the top of the wicked web batting order and Samantha Legere Samantha flew out to center field in her leadoff at bat in the bottom of the first so she gets back up in the sixth starts off in the first and then uh, she'll see the plate again in the sixth inning just to finish on Haley Donaldson who Amanda just talked to Haley plays basketball at Fossil Ridge High School along with fast pitch softball and uh, just a sophomore 2016 grad Haley's parents Kim and John got a brother Hunter and her uncle Jeff I was an Oilers fan growing up, and he was a safety in the NFL, played for uh, the Chiefs, the Falcons, and the Oilers in his career to Jeff Donaldson, the uncle of Haley. So uh, I know her dad, John, fairly well, and I know he's a, he's a pretty impressive gentleman himself. You got Jeff, the uncle, and you got John, the dad, and you got Kim, the mom. You, Very cool. and, uh, probably a bunch of other people who yep. are part of the, the uh, impressive bloodlines, the, yep. <laughs> the next generation in the Donaldson group. Thanks to Haley for joining us. Yeah, sweet kid. Yeah, great, you know, great story. And Amanda, you could tell uh, when they finished that up, just the, the pure joy of, of a kid yeah. playing the game. And yeah, I've got a challenge, but you know what? We probably all do in whatever yeah. way. And I'm just out here to have a great time like everybody else. And she makes, she does a great job. She's played some good shortstop today and she really uh, brings a great attitude to the ball field every day to Haley. Definitely. There was a, uh, maybe a ball four, but uh, thought the batter Legere, but nope, says our plate umpire. Michael Finch keeps her there and gives her a chance to swing it and she'll get a base hit in the book. So Legere thankful for that opportunity to stay in the box. Tries for two, has two. Hustle play by Legere. She blows second base off of its moorings. She is safe at two. Well, Legere is gonna get this ball and just drive it into the outfield. But I love the way she's aggressive out of the box. Aggressive from the first step around first base and then into second. With one out, Legere safe at second base. And that sets up Gianna Aruza Rieta for her second at bat. She grounded out to short her first time up, did Gianna of Gold Coast Hurricanes. Our umpires honored today with the assignment to this All-American televised game. Home plate umpire Michael Finch at first base, Dave Polvardi. And our third base umpire, John Lawrence, thanks to Michael, Dave, and John for taking care of wearing the blue today in this All-American competition. Wicked Web leading three to one. Halloween-themed team names from Plantation, Florida, and Central Park. Our thanks to the city crews here in Plantation for their fine efforts to pull off rising stars and keep the fields flowing in good shape. Fly ball to center field. Aruza Rieta is a fly out to Marissa Gurgle. Nikki Alden in left, Leah McGovern in right this inning, and Gurgle playing center. Courtney Shea is doing the catching of Haley Wiseman. Rachel Taylor at first, Megan O'Bear at second, Sarah Beth Wengert at third, and Brooke Hardy is playing short this inning for the defense of Monster Mash. 
Wiseman gets a strike. I, don't know, I love the fact that Wiseman writes on her uh, her bio here that her first pitching coach made her write 500 times that I will be stoic on the mound. <laughs> Katie Wenger takes a swing, pops it up above the catcher, and hung on to. Good work by Courtney Shea to turn her back to the infield and play with the breeze that's blowing that ball around. Shea hauls in the pop-up by Wenger, and we're done with six. Weller would like to seal the victory here and then let her teammates take a victory lap with the bats in the bottom of the seventh. But the resistance starts with Megan O'Bear of Florida Power Black. Megan would like to be a DJ when she grows up. Said the uh, unique thing about her, plays softball with her hair down. Doesn't bind it, tie it up, lets it flow. And here she'll get on board, a tough ball in the infield. And O'Bear bounces it off the shortstop Legere and then hustles to beat the pickup scoop up throw attempt. And that was uh, a pretty good effort at second base on the try, but uh, just not quite enough to get, get the job done. And that'll be a runner on base. And uh, let's check back over into Amanda Scarborough's world. Haley Weissman just got done pitching for Monster Mash and did a great job in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Michelle mentioned that she had uh, a pitching coach who made her write, I will be stoic 500 times. And I wanted to, to talk to Haley to ask her, why do you think it's important to be stoic on the mound? Um, I think it's important to be stoic on the mound because you get the ball every pitch. So if you're not, if you're down and you feel like down, the whole team's gonna show off of that. And how do you feel like you do at being stoic on the mound? Um, I think I do a good job at it. I try not to let the other team see how I'm feeling, even if I am a little rattled. All right, Haley Weissman. Love it. That's good. Pitchers can't show their emotions out there. Got to stay for, strong. Chance for two on that. Good. Uh, Sticky hands from Legere at shortstop, who hung on to the flip. It was a quick bang, bang move, and Legere holds on for the out. Yeah, a situation going up the middle like that, that sometimes think about grabbing it and actually stepping on the bag. I don't know if you still would have had the opportunity, I don't think so, to get the double play, but sometimes just eliminating the opportunity for maybe an error or a bobble. Sometimes just picking that up, if you're that close to the bag, go ahead and step on it. Olivia Markopoulos made the pickup and the successful toss to Legere for the out. Bang, bang play, and when you have that kind of quick action going on and a lack of familiarity with your in middle infield mate, yeah. here, you take it, I, and the out is recorded, so give him credit for getting that done. And nice snag by Legere to hang on to it. The fielder's choice for Marissa Gurgle. And that brings Brooke Clemens back to the plate, her second chance to hit in this All-American game. Audrey Weller is pitching this top of the seventh, another roller. And this one bobbled and safe at second base on the flip. Runners at first and second with one down. Ron, well, that's a perfect example of how it can be difficult. Now, granted, they got the out on the f and it was much closer. This one. The flip is a little bit low, and you can see that the way that just with that flip being a little low, if you're off balance, it's hard to be able to stretch in the opposite direction or go down and get that ball. So nice try, but just executed just off just a little bit. Strike delivered to Jocelyn Myers of American Freedom. Jocelyn today has put in some good effort at shortstop and in the outfield, playing some center field. This ball to right center, diving try and driving, diving catch. The out made, laid out and done. Kylan Becker with the diving effort for the out. It was hard to tell whether or not that was going to be short hopped or not. Looked like it might have been. The runners stay. Looks like they're giving the out. I saw the umpire ring it, and Kylan hangs one up. That brings Leah McGovern to the plate. McGovern chops it in the infield. Legere charges and tags. Takes the easy route, six unassisted. Nobody scores in the top of the seventh for Monster Mash. Wicked Webb will bat in the bottom of the seventh. It is at second, Brooke Clemens at third. Emily Lockton at short. Katrina Polkeri in left. Jocelyn Myers in center, and Donna Conrad in right field. In the final half inning of defense here for Monster Mash. Strike one from Brantley on the pitch. Audrey Weller, who just pitched the previous half inning, threw a lot of ground balls. Good work to get the ball on the ground. And I wanted to mention she had told us a thing that she really wanted to put out there was she'd really love to play for a top academic school. She has schools like Penn and Columbia Brown. 
Northwestern, Babson College, all on her radar and would love to go to a school with a, a high academic standard and program. This ball foul, nicely played at third and thrown across. Good job continuing the play at third, Brooke Clemens. It is foul and the batter comes back. Kirsten Martin continues her at bat. Good look at Brooke Clemens. Brooke caught first and fourth innings and drew a third inning card here, or a third base card for us here in the seventh inning. Kirsten Martin hits a shot to right and almost hit it too hard, but she will beat it out for the single. Donna Conrad came up and took a shot at it. Safe with the single is Kirsten Martin. You know, Martin's going to get a pitch on the outside corner. It's a curveball, just hangs up a little bit, and she peppers it the opposite way. I tell you, Thad, one of the things I'm most impressed with is the way a lot of these younger athletes are hitting the outside corner, the outside pitch, and driving it the opposite way. Kylan Becker fouls it down the third base line. Kylan also a soccer player. Her team in Miami won the 2013 8A State of Florida Championship, Coral Reef High School champions. Kylan, part of that group. A junior this year is Kylan. Kylan also uh, just moments ago in right field made that diving effort. The out that kept the runners where they were at instead of turning into run possibility for Monster Mash and that helped Wicked Web seal this three to one victory. Now they can just pad it if they want to. They've won it, and we'll see if they want to add any more for the record books. Two one pitch to Becker. Brantley changes speeds nicely. Becker stays alive. Just a very small piece of that pitch, but enough to stay in the box. From 58 miles per hour on the previous pitch. Toned it down to 44 there, did Shannon Brantley. Shannon sporting some top-notch socks in the circle. October, a lot of pink flowing on the field. I love it. There you go. Pink with pink bows. Pink or bows. <laughs> Just got that one surrounded. Ground ball, nice flip. Good speed down the line by Becker, denies the double play try. Locked in good quick feed from the shortstop slot over to Logan Lilly. Yeah, very nice defensive effort. Let's see the way this ball's hit. Back up the metal, nice flip over to second, real quick turn, but Becker runs very well getting down the line. And now running, Becker is Thrown out, strong throw from Sarah Crawford from behind the plate, two away. Crawford with a gun. Great pop time, look at the way she gets rid of that ball so quick. Sarah Crawford, a freshman, just 14 years of age. Wow. That's a cannon, she's out of Bradenton, Florida, plays volleyball and basketball. Hit her first home run of her career on her father's birthday. Happy birthday, Jay, back in another game she played. And playing for America's team in Italy and Greece, one of her top moments of her career. This ball popped up and will be caught. Haley Donaldson popped it, and after the steal throw out and the fielder's choice in the infield, Donaldson's pop-up is the third out of the bottom of the seventh, and that puts a final score on the board. In our All-American game, Wicked Web three and Monster, Monster Mash one here from Plantation, Florida. We've put a final score on the board. We'll be back after a break to wrap it up, but Michelle, before we go away, Again, your thoughts, you know, you think about these young players and, and the experience they just had. What don't they realize about what just happened quite yet that they'll realize later? Uh, they're 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, they're going to look back and think, wow, this was really cool. Even when they get through their collegiate careers and go on to do other things, they're going to remember this moment playing with other athletes around the country and uh, being on television most likely for the first time for many of them. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty neat opportunity. I, I bet they keep that DVD for a long time to come. We'll have some final images for you from South Florida on CBS Sports Network, Wicked Web 3, Monster Mash 1 at the Rising Stars All-American Game. Finish this off on CBS Sports Network, and one way we want to do that is uh, hear from a few more of our participants today, and Amanda will help us do that. Yeah, now we're here with Megan O'Beer, who played for the Monster Mash team, and I wanted to get a little insight from her about what the game was like out there today. 
Oh, it was very, it was a very cool experience, like being able to like play with other teammates and see how they, like we all communicated and everything. And it was a cool experience. Really. And what do you think that you can take from today into a big tournament this weekend? Oh, just always play hard and always communicate. And from your point of view, what do you think that a lot of college coaches are out there looking to recruit? Oh, just a great player all around, like just very like good with everything and yeah. All right, thanks, Megan. Megan O'Bear of Pembroke Pines, Florida, first team all county as a sophomore in her high school endeavors, now a junior and a 2015 grad. Megan, thanks for taking a minute to talk with us after the game. And uh, as Amanda works on a couple of different options for us to hear from some of our participants today. Michelle, you've participated all day long. And, uh, <laughs> it, you know, you, teams travel from everywhere. you got to yeah. buy your plane tickets. you got to get your yep. hotels. But, you know, the players, just get me to the field. And yeah. today we saw a lot of passion for being out here. A lot of passion. You know, they enjoy the game. A lot of smiles, meeting new people. Great opportunity, great experiences, as we heard Megan O'Bear say. You know, I think the big thing is, is that these are the type of things. These are the intangibles that you're going to remember for a long time. I look back over my career as a young athlete. I don't remember if I won, if I lost. I don't remember anything. I remember the experiences. And that's what these young kids are building here today at this tournament. Amanda, what else have we learned today over there? Well, I wanted to know from Sarah Beth Wingard, what was her most um, memorable moment today? Just being able to get to know all the teammates and how they are and how they are able to play the game and just communicate with all of us. And when you look back at softball in general, what do you feel like you've learned from playing this sport? Uh, how to have fun, and but yet keep going, push it, and that's about it. And what are you looking forward to this upcoming weekend? Be able to play good, um, be recruited, and just work hard. All right, thanks, Sarah Beth. Sarah Beth Wengert of Sarasota, Florida, has played with the Sarasota Heat since she was 14 years old in eighth grade. And her favorite sports moments when she hit a grand slam and when she got her first par in golf. She has a verbal commitment to USF. South Florida is where Sarah Beth plans to continue her fast pitch pursuit. So good luck to Sarah Beth moving on down the line in her career. But first, before that, she's a 2016 grad, so she's got a couple of years left to enjoy high school. And like we talked about earlier, Michelle, the moments, the memories, the, the little things that are going to happen between now and graduation for these players, you just never know where they're coming from, what's going to stick in your mind, what's going to change you as a person. And I think of the 51 players here today, more than a few of them have probably been changed by today's experience. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, just going out on the field. I think the other thing that's important is that you're playing with athletes from another part of the country, and all of a sudden you notice, like, well, how are they hitting the outside pitch? What's their field uh, glove position like? You learn from other people. And I used to do that all the time with Lisa, Lisa Fernandez and I. We would learn each other's pitches. We would learn different hitting styles. And when you play with other new athletes, you can look at their tendencies, look at their, their techniques, and help it build your own game just yet another um, aspect of this event that makes it so great. Well, don't go anywhere. We've got more reports from the trenches when we come back from a quick break on CBS Sports Network. This is the Rising Stars All-American game. Wicked Web All-Americans beat Monster Mash 3-1 to one today from Plantation, Florida. We are in Florida, and we did find it, the Fountain of Fast Pitch. That's what that is. That's where it all originates. Beautiful shot here in Plantation. Thanks to our production crew today again for your day of effort on bringing these two games to the air on CBS Sports Network. Thanks to all the production crew today, Thad Anderson, Michelle Smith, going to wrap it up for you from Plantation. And before we do more of our thing over here, we want to hear a little bit from one of the coaches from today's uh, All-American dugout. Tim Speakman is joining Amanda Scarborough. Yeah, he was the head coach of the Wicked Web team that was out here just a second ago, and then also the head coach at Ave Maria University. And I wanted to ask you, how do you feel like the game went today? I thought it went pretty well. Uh, three things we asked him to do today, and that was to play hard, play smart, and play fast. And we th felt that uh, they did all three of those things today. Very pleased about the way the effort that they gave. Now, you spend a lot of days recruiting, and you get to see a lot of players. What just exactly are you looking for when you're looking at these recruits? Well, one of the big things we look uh, for at Ave Maria is intangibles, the little intangibles. Uh, of course, the way they play uh, attracts us first, but then we look for the academics because ultimately that's the, ultra, that's the most important thing is the academics. And then we look for how do they uh, act towards their teammates, how do they act and react towards their coaches, uh, hustling off the field on and off the field uh, in the type of effort that they're given. So those, the intangibles are more important to us than the skills. All right, thanks coach. Remember that's why these girls are out here is to get recruited. Thank you.
Tim Speakman of Ave Maria University, Gina De Aguaro of Miami Dade College, coached the Wicked Web, and for Monster Mash, it was PJ Anadio from Herkimer County Community College in New York, and Dale Atkinson of Indian River State College in Florida, thanks to our coaches today. We heard the word intangibles. Yeah. Michelle Smith, you sponsored my smoothie this morning. You bought me my smoothie. <laughs> I didn't want to forget that on the air today. Thank you. And <laughs> that's welcome. intangible. That's part of why I love you. Uh, <laughs> intangibles and recruiting, that's yeah. more than what you do on the field or, or one play you make in the Rising Stars. I know you talk yeah. a lot about that. You think a lot about that, and, and you talk a lot to players about that. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I always say when I'm doing speaking engagements or I'm talking to young athletes or at my camps and clinics, I always say, you know what, softball is what you do, right? But it's who you are that's most important. And I always say softball is what I did, but who I am is what's most important. So you got to be a great person on and off the field. Help your teammates get better. If you help your teammates get better, you're going to help yourself get better and your team get better. And, and that's what it's all about, the intangibles. You do that, coaches are going to notice you. You're going to get a scholarship. I Never got to my lunch. You helped me with that strawberry smoothie get through today, and that's your intangible. That's Michelle Teamwork. Smith, and uh, <laughs> been great to have you again today, Michelle. Thanks for coming over Absolutely. to Rising Stars. Love it here. For Michelle Smith, Amanda Scarborough, and our entire crew, I'm Thad Anderson. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. Rising Stars is produced by Triple Crown Sports in association with CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Congratulations to all of our All-Americans. Today, it's the Wicked Web winning 3-1 to one over Monster Mash. Good luck with the next steps of your fast pitch careers.